In a small library in Philadelphia, 1961, a woman gives birth to a baby boy. However, another man sees the child and asks the midwife if she had dropped the baby since he has fractured legs and arms. Many years later, David Dunn, a security guard, boards a train, East Rail 177, from New York, where he had a job interview, to his hometown, Philadelphia. David tries to flirt with a woman, but she gets uncomfortable and switches seat. The train starts speeding up, and David looks around, sensing doom. In David's house, his sons learn of an accident where David's train derailed. At the hospital, David learns of the accident and that he is the sole survivor. However, the doctor is puzzled as David had not sustained any injury from the accident and his body is in perfect shape. As he leaves the hospital room, he sees many families of the victims, and they all eye him, some in wonder and others in contempt. David reunites with his son and wife at the lobby. The trio exits the hospital as many news reporters document the incident. David attends the funeral service for the 131 accident victims. After the funeral, he finds a limited edition card and a note on his windshield. The note has a question, asking David if he has ever been sick in his entire life. David sees no one nearby, but the question eats at him. He asks his boss at work if he ever had sick days, and the boss assumes David is asking for a raise. At home, David asks his estranged wife the same question, but she cannot remember seeing David sick. The realization baffles David even more. David and his son visit Limited Edition, an art gallery owned by Elijah Price. Elijah is the boy born in the first scene. He suffers from type 1 osteogenesis imperfecta, a condition that leaves his bones extremely fragile and prone to fractures. Elijah confirms that David has never gotten sick or injured, but David's son Joseph claims that David had gotten injured. David was a star quarterback but quit when he got into a car accident. Elijah explains his condition, revealing that he spent a lot of time in hospitals, so he took to reading about superheroes. This made him realize that as far as the spectrum goes, there has to be someone whose bones are unbreakable on the opposite end. Elijah feels that David is the one, but David refutes the claims. He shares that he has met many people like Elijah whose interest is making quick cash in his line of work. However, Elijah's words keep tormenting David, forcing him to retrieve newspaper clippings of the car accident and the train wreck. David's wife, Audrey, emotionally breaks down, expressing her gratitude at David surviving the train crash and that he's remained faithful despite their issues. Elijah pays David a visit at the stadium, where a game is about to begin. He notices David's intuition to a dangerous man and asks David how many times he has correctly deduced that someone was up to no good. Elijah advises David to harness his abilities and mentions that David could have picked up any career in the world but chose to be a security guard, aligning with his role as the people's protector. At the parking lot, Elijah sees the dangerous man from earlier and follows him to the subway. Unfortunately, Elijah slips and falls down the stairs, but before he loses consciousness, he sees a gun on the man's thigh, realizing that David's intuition earlier was right. At home, Joseph is determined to prove his father's abilities, so he helps him with weights. The two add on from 250 pounds until they get to 350, with David lifting the weights easily. At the hospital, Elijah is informed of his numerous fractures and reveals that kids used to call him Mr. Glass due to his condition. Elijah's physiotherapist turns out to be Audrey, David's wife. Audrey reveals that she married David after he quit football. She likes the game but hates the violence that comes with it. Elijah reveals that he's in contact with David and sells the notion that David is a superhero. David is at the stadium when someone bumps on him and touches him. David sees that the man had just taken something from the men's garbage bin. He pulls the man out of the tickets line, fearing that he is a drug dealer, but the man is clean. David's intuition is not wrong, but before he can investigate any further, he gets a call to Joseph's school. The principal recognizes him, reminding him of an incident that happened when he was a kid at the school. He had drowned and died, but after being removed from the water, he spent a week in the hospital recovering from pneumonia. His accident was the reason the school updated their swimming pool rules. As they exit the school, Joseph explains that he had tried to stop some bullies from harassing another kid. Joseph wishes he had powers like his father, but David maintains he is an ordinary man. That statement infuriates Joseph, and he wonders what it will take for his father to believe him. That evening, Joseph gets his father's gun and loads it, intending to shoot him and prove that he is invulnerable. 
David manages to calm Joseph down and threatens to leave, prompting Joseph to drop the gun. He cries, wondering why his father refuses to accept his destiny. David meets up with Elijah and challenges his theory with the pool incident. Elijah says that water might be David's kryptonite, but David asks him to stay away from his family. David then has dinner with Audrey. Audrey confesses that if she knew what the future held for them, she would never have wished injury on David. At home, David has two calls. From one, he learns that the interviewers from New York want to hire him. Audrey wishes David well should he take the job. The other call is from Elijah, who maintains that David should embrace his abilities. Later, David remembers the night of the car accident. He had ripped the burning car's door to save Audrey. When a good Samaritan asked him if he was hurt, he had lied. David calls Elijah and confirms that he has never sustained bodily harm save for the drowning incident. He wishes to know how to proceed, so Elijah advises him to seek out a crowd since his abilities seem to heighten then. He also advises him to be careful as looking into people might overwhelm him. David wears a black cape and walks to the subway. A woman in a red dress shoves him and he touches her. Instantly, he sees that the woman has just stolen an expensive necklace. He also sees one man racially assaulting someone at night and another molesting a drunk girl. These visions startle him and he takes a step back, accidentally touching a passing janitor. He sees the janitor knock on a man's house and demand entry. When denied, he pushes his way in and kills the owner. David follows the janitor as he packs his stuff and retires for the day. He sees that the janitor goes to the house where he had committed this heinous act. David follows him into the house where he discovers that the man lives with his wife and two kids. David starts looking for the rest of the family, finding the kids locked and bound in a closet upstairs. He frees the kids and goes to look for their mother. He spots her, but before he can untie her, the janitor ambushes him from behind and pushes him out of the window. David lands on a buoyant surface, realizing that he's in the family's pool once the paper covering the pool crumbles under his weight. David is in danger of suffocating, but the kids help him out of the pool by pulling him out with a bat. David returns to the house where the janitor has just finished killing the mother. David sneak attacks and strangles the janitor to death. That night, he cuddles with his wife, something he hadn't done in a while. The following morning, Joseph is pleased to find his parents getting along. As Audrey prepares breakfast, she explains that the next time Elijah tries to contact them, she will call the police. Joseph picks up the newspaper and sees a story of how a hero rescued two children. Joseph shows the story to his father and David nods, confirming himself to be the hero. Joseph cries profusely as he silently promises to keep David's secret from Audrey and anyone else. Sometime later, David visits Limited Edition for a showing. Here, he encounters Elijah's mother. Most of Elijah's artwork involves villains and superheroes. While looking at One Piece, Elijah's mother explains that there are two kinds of villains, those who use physical strength to cause harm and those who use their intelligence. Elijah leads David to his private study. He asks David how he felt after saving those kids, making David realize his true purpose on Earth as people's protector. Elijah says that it is now time to shake hands. As David shakes Elijah's hands, he sees several things. First, Elijah is in an airport when a plane crashes. Elijah meets with an informer regarding burning people to death at a hotel, and Elijah departs from East Rail's cabin. David steps back and looks at the room. He sees various news clippings of major accidents that claimed people's lives. Elijah confirms that he is the mastermind behind all of those acts. He calls them sacrifices to find his superhero. He explains that by finding David, he now knows that he is not a mistake and his purpose in life is to be David's villain. As David leaves, Elijah adopts his childhood name Mr. Glass as his supervillain name. A text reveals that David reported Elijah's actions to the police and Elijah is confirmed to a psychiatric clinic for the criminally insane. Do leave a comment telling us your favorite part of the movie. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next recap. Until next time, folks, take care and goodbye.